Shri Shri Radha Govind Dev Ki Jai. So we're back with another reading from Prema Mala. And without too much introduction, we are going to jump right back into the story. I was reading from a piece called Loved Straight yesterday. So this is video two in the series. If you haven't seen video one, please go check it out because it will give you everything you need to be caught up in the story. So just a little recap. We met a girl named Kubja. She has a physical deformity and she lives in a city called Matara. She usually likes to keep to herself and keep to the shadows, but this day is special and she has to travel the main road in the city to get to the king's palace. While she's traveling on the main road, she comes across a group of boys and one of them is the most handsome boy that she has ever seen in her life. Kubja couldn't help the gasp that escaped her and her hand flew to her mouth. She balanced her tray with her other hand, still aware that if her oils fell, she would face a much worse predicament than the one she currently found herself in. Although she was looking at his face with its curling locks of hair that kissed his round cheeks and his warm brown eyes that drew her in until Kubja could hardly remember her own name, nothing could have prepared her for the sound of his voice. Oh, beautiful lady, with your finely shaped eyebrows and your exquisite form, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? He spoke, and Kubja's heart stopped completely. His eyes searched hers, and a corner of his mouth lifted in the most charming smile. He couldn't have been real. Kubja's mind went blank, and her heart started up again at a stampeding pace as she stared openly at the youth before her. She could hear the laughter from his friends, but nothing mattered anymore. It all faded away as she was engulfed in his eyes that glowed with the beauty of all the sunsets put together. T -t Trivakra, she murmured, and he raised an eyebrow at her. She snapped back to attention and tried to answer him again. I am called Trivakra, bent in three places. Kubja burned with shame at the name that she had been given by others. She lowered her eyes, but not before she caught him appraising her form from head to toe. A scarlet blush crept slowly up her cheeks, but whether it was from shame or his gaze, she was no longer sure. I too am bent in three places. He spoke as though he was pleased that they had something in common. She could hear the smile in his voice, and all of a sudden, it didn't matter what he said, as long as he would continue talking to her. Kubja had never felt this way before and she found herself abandoning her shame and settling her roaming eyes on his face again. How could he have compared himself with her? He was perfection, and she was barely kept at birth. He was the composition of poems and the basis of all melodies, and she merely hoped that those who saw her would forget her monstrous form the minute she was out of sight. Sham Sundar, she breathed. She wanted to be appalled. She had never spoken so openly to anyone before. But with him, it seemed as though perhaps he would understand her. It felt as though maybe he would see past her outward form and really, truly see her. His smile grew as she said his name and his eyes dropped to the tray she had forgotten all about. Ah! Oils! That's what smells so lovely. Who are they for, my beautiful girl? His eyes searched hers again, 
and Kubja found herself smiling, really smiling. How long had it been since she had felt genuinely happy? Kubja almost couldn't remember, but now that he had come, it seemed as though her life would never know hardship again. These are the king's favorite oils. He likes mine the best. Kubja straightened as much as the hunch in her back would allow her to, pride in her creations taking over for the first time in as long as she could remember. She read the question in the beautiful youth's eyes and quickly answered again. That is in fact all the king tolerates me for. I am known for no other reason. Kubja swallowed thickly. She did not want him to get the idea that she was somehow like many of the other women employed within the king's service who would serve him wine along with themselves. The king had never set his sights on Kubja. He allowed her to deliver her oils and ointments, and then she was dismissed unceremoniously. The mention of the king finally brought Kubja's wayward mind under control. She was late and the king would be waiting. On this most special day, who knew how angry he would be that he was made to wait for his oils and sandalwood paste? She would face his wrath, but she found that she was still unable to cross the checkpoint of boys that stood in front of her. The king is most unfortunate if he cannot appreciate such a rare beauty within his own city. Sundari, may I have some of your oils? Surely he had to have been joking when he lavished compliments on her, but Lord help her, Kubja couldn't resist when he bent himself nearly in half so that he could look her directly in the eyes. She knew that she would never deny him anything, even if he asked for her own life. Looking into his eyes felt strange and familiar, as though Kubja could see snatches of another life. She could see herself crying, the tears flowing from her eyes like the many rivulets of the great Ganga. She moved slowly, heavily burdened. She felt like herself and yet different. She knew that inside she was the same as she had ever been, but her outward form had changed. She could not even say that she felt like a person anymore. She had the distinct feeling of horns on her head, like a cow, perhaps. What was this magic? What was this experience? Her heart felt as though it was breaking and her back ached. She heard the echo of her own voice in her head. The sound was different heart-wrenching, as though she were being choked from within. Oh, Lord, how can I bear them any longer? These kings are nothing more than demons. Please, save me. Her own anguished voice brought tears to her eyes, but before they could slip down her cheeks, the vision was gone, and Kubja was once again in the middle of the main road of Mutara looking into the eyes of the beautiful youth again. Who was this boy? How had she seen all that she had just by looking into his clear brown eyes? She would have continued to stare, but his voice broke her meditation. And that's it for part two. You have to tune in tomorrow for part three. Sorry, it's funner this way. See you soon.